I should shoot you, Ben Thompson. No. I should do it. Doc, this is just plain murder. Can't you calm these two down? You deserve killing, Ben. Rita? No, Doc. Jenny? Now I'll give a count of three. And then you fire. One. Holiday, the outlaw Ben Thompson was probably the sorest trial to Marshal Wyatt Earp. Ben always insisted that he loved Wyatt like a brother. And according to Ben's curious code, this gave him the right to call on Wyatt for help in any personal matter not concerned with breaking the law. One day in 1878, Wyatt found himself involved in a real mess with Ben Thompson, Doc Holliday, and two angry women. And after I put up the $5,000 to go partners with Ben in a sparrow game, he ran out on me. There was also the minor detail that he promised marriage. Sounds just like Ben Thompson. You certainly is here in Dodge. Where else? He bragged to me that he and Wyatt Earp are pals. Say, what kind of a Johnny Law are you hiring for Marshall anyway? Oh, now, just hold your temper, Miss McCabe. I'll get this straightened out. With Earp? Yes. When? Well, right away. I've warned him repeatedly about Ben Thompson. I'm the mayor of this town, and I run things here. And I am no wench to be treated this way. I am Rita Morales. My father, my uncles, my brother, my cousin. Please, Senorita, please. Please, please stop saying that. Prove to me that you do not approve of his behavior. Yeah. I am not a stupid, defenseless Yankee. I will make trouble for you. Much trouble. Yeah. Well, I, I believe that, Senorita. Now, where is Ben? Where, where can I find him? Well, he's not in church. Hmm. Look for him in saloons or dance halls or big faro games. And be quick. I have little patience. And my vaqueros, they have no patience at all. Excuse. Certainly. <clears throat> Wyatt, <clears throat> your friend Ben Thompson's in town. I know. She told me. She did? Well, there are two women mixed up in this? I only met Senorita Morales. Well, I met another one. Name of Jenny McCabe. Oh, pretty howdy do. She must be if she's as pretty as Miss Rita. Oh, prettier. Well constructed redhead with. Oh. Now, Wyatt, I've begged you a dozen times to have nothing to do with Ben Thompson. Now he's brought the makings of a scandal, maybe even bloodshed, right to your very door. Mr. Mayor, I'll have a little talk with Ben, and if. Uh, well, if I find that the facts justify it, I'll make him leave town. Facts you're needing? A man has played fast and loose with every woman this side of I San... know, Mr. Mayor, I know. But let's try to leave the ladies out of this, huh? They're no angels, you know, and they can... Well, they can play fast and loose, too. Well, I leave it in your hands, Wyatt. <laughs> hey, Don, I gotta talk to you, man. Wait till I finish here. You're here to gamble the gossip. He's here. Ben Thompson's in town. Me and Charlie's got some business with him. He just rode in the Durgan's livery stable. Excuse us, Doc. Give me time to get him back of him. All right. You take over, Mike. I'm going to referee a fight. me, Don Burkett? Take him. Got the dope on you, Ben. Doc Holliday. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Doc. That was a close one. I appreciate it. I'll take five cents for the cartridge. You'll... 
<laughs> Same old doc. All right, there's a dime. You keep the change. Get out of town, Ben. Wait a minute. How's come you're sore now? I never did regard you with anything but dislike. All right, sir. Charlie there had to drop on me. Why didn't you let him hurt me? You know I don't sanction front and back gunplay. Two against one. That's right. I forgot. Well, anyway, thanks a lot, Hal. This one's dead, Marshal. Here comes the deacon. All right, who did it? I have a feral game running. Talk to you later. Uh. Well? Well, I... I guess I shot that one there, pal. But Doc Holliday, he shot that one over there. <laughs> Charged me five cents for the cartridge. They're both dead, Wyatt. Both of them are drawn. This one managed to get off one shot. All right. Go get the corner, huh? Right. Did you know him? Yeah. That one there is Don Burkett. That's Charlie Patton over there. A couple of sore heads thought I was cheating him in a poker game. I'll be up to post bond. But that ain't what's got me spooked. Pal, a couple of girlfriends of mine are chasing me with guns. Mm -hmm. A Miss Morales and a Miss McCabe. They're already here. Wyatt, I, I shouldn't be out here on the street. You put me in jail, huh? You're asking for protective custody? Sure, pal. You spread the word that I got six months, then they'll get tired of waiting around and leave town. Uh, well, it isn't that simple, Ben. All right, then, pal. You just look up Rita and Jenny, and you tell them to get out of town. And you tell them to quit threatening me. Wyatt, why can't we get in off the street? Ben, both women claim that you promised to marry. Miss McCabe told the mayor that you took $5,000 from her. Now, are their statements true? Are they true? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I knew you lied to women. You do that all the time. But this is the first time I ever heard of you promising to marry any. You're already married. Well, that's just it, pal. I'm not. Your wife divorced you, huh? <laughs> Two months ago in San Antonio. I can't do anything. Best thing for you to do is to get out of Dodge pronto. Fine. Well, I guess you better just dig me a grave, pal. Come on now, you're not afraid of two women, are you? Did you ever see a woman shoot? No. Oh. Now, I'm not fooling, Wyatt. They're deadly. Now, they never felt the recoil of a gun before, so they don't flinch none. They just point it at you like they're pointing their finger and pow. Well, what can I do? Well, what can I do about it? You can't shoot back at them. I'm sorry. I know you'd help me if you could, but you can't. How long do I get to stay in Dodge? Until sundown, Mayor Kelly's orders. Hard, but fair, I guess. There's six thousand dollars. You find Jenny and give her her five back, and the other thousand ought to about cover my burial. Ought to just about cover it. Do I get my gun back, pal? Hmm? Oh, sure, sure. But you, uh, you wouldn't wear it on the street, would you? Oh, no, no, I didn't. Well, so long, pal. So long, Ben. <laughs>
I'm Jenny McCabe, the new city clerk. Oh, Mayor Kelly must have just hired you. Well, Marshal Earp left his night record sheet in his room, and he asked me to pick it up for the file. I see. Well, uh, I guess it's all right, miss. It'll only take a second. Wait here. you want? Same as you. I must find Ben. Satisfied? No. This is the Marshal Earth's room. You came here to get information from him. My own idea. I also need the information. And I claim the right to settle with Ben first. He's got a lot of money that belongs to me. Ben proposed first to me. It is my family shame. I do not want my uncles and brothers to be put in jail for shooting that man. Then clear out. I'll do the job. I don't trust you. Are you calling me a liar? You are worse than that. You are a common dance hall gambler. Oh! Ah! Oh! Oh! Mister. Yeah, Charlie? I gave that new clerk the key to your room. New clerk? Miss McCabe from the mayor's office. She said you told her to pick up some police records. Thank you. You let go of that gun. I will not. Yes, you will. Oh. 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 All right, break it up. Break it up, both of you. Break it up. I said break it up. Oh. Now, whose gun is this? Never mind. Where is Ben? You hide him? No. What's happening? What's going on here? Yeah. Two of them, Marshal. Oh. That's right. Two of them. Get out of here. I am certainly and shut the door. At you. Marshal shut the door. Shut the door. of the church. Oh. The idea of such a thing. Now, Miss Morales, Miss McCabe, I have good news for you. Ben Thompson has left Dodge. He returned your $5,000. I have it for you in my office. Ben run away? Don't you believe him. You're a John Law. What business is this of yours? Mayor Kelly says you appealed to him for help. I did not. I just warned him that you and Ben are dear old pals. Oh, now, wait a minute. Mr. Thompson has never caused me anything but trouble, and I ordered him to leave town. I'm going to request that you leave my room. Both of you. I'll drop by for the money. Won't you let me talk to Ben just for a few minutes? Miss Morales, I don't know where he is. May I have my gun back, please? All right. Gracias. You are in deep trouble. I am sorry. Doc Holliday is aiming to massacre some fellas down at the Long Branch. Oh, Move! Move! Hey, Doc, I didn't mean to oh, start those fire it up. Can we kill us a few skunks, Ben? I'll just take this in. Right? Hold it! Now, what's all this about? They've been lying about you, Wyatt. They say you're mixed up with two women. Ben knows the women. I thought I told you to leave town. Well, it ain't sundown yet, pal. Mr. Thompson, you go to my rooms in the Dodge House. Refresh yourself. I'll settle this with Deacon Hood. Get out. 
Break it up. I hold no brief with Ben Thompson. He's a scamp. But you consider your own idiotic behavior. You allow Jim Kelly to bulldoze you into messing with Ben and his women. Mr. Kelly is the mayor. Yeah. He's also the first man who'll turn against you when these lies are printed in the newspapers. Why, I've come to the conclusion you need a thoroughgoing scandal to befriend you in this affair. Ben Thompson, I reckon, huh? No. No, Ben's a newfoundland puppy at heart. I offer you my assistance. Mm, thanks. Then I take it my office, accept it. Look, Doc, I told Ben to get out of town. Now, when he leaves, the women are going to chase after him, and it's all going to be over. They won't put an end to the story that you're a fancy Dan. A hundred Texas cowhands you threw in jail will be only too happy to repeat that slander. Well, talk has never bothered me. Let him blabber. That's going to be your attitude. I'll just have to act without your consent. Look, Doc, why don't you be sensible? What difference does it make if they say I had 50 women in my hotel room? What difference? Why, men like me have a curious obligation to the truth. It would sicken me to be called good, and conversely, I don't propose to have you called bad. You, you're often a sentimental idiot. But you are not bad. Quiet! More trouble. A bunch of Mexicans just moved in. They're watching the Dodge house. How many? Five or six. Well, disarm them, Marshal. Disarm them. I'll give it my attention, sir. Good. Look, don't you think you ought to push along the newspaper office, Mr. Mayor? Right. Wyatt, uh, Ben Thompson's not worth a gunfight. He's holed up in Doc's quarters at the hotel. Doc will join any play made against him. I hate to get tough with the Mexicans. Yeah, I know. Every time we've had to do it, we found out they were right. Look, I want to talk to the Morales girl. See if you can find her, will you? Right. Ben? Read his boys. Looks like they got me surrounded, Doc. You let Wyatt take care of them. What's the truth behind all this, Ben? You interested? Any dealings you might have with women would arise a certain morbid curiosity, yes. Sit down. Got a drink? Always. <sighs> now tell me exactly how you got yourself into this fix. Well... Tell you. I came for my money. Oh, well, there's a little hitch. Oh, no, none of that. $5,000. You said Ben left it for me. Yeah, well, uh, Ben hasn't left town. Well, what's that got to do with... Look, Miss McKay, there are a bunch of Morales gunfighters that have got Ben surrounded. Where? The Dodge Hotel. She can't pull that. I'm settling with Ben, not her. You want to marry him? I might have my childish dreams. Who knows? Mm. Well, I think you want to shoot Ben. I think Miss Rita might have the same idea. She's just as sore Ben as I am, and meaner, too. Why, she'd shoot him and... I told my vaqueros to stay out of town. How dare you blame me for what happened? I blame all three of you. Now, I'm going to give you ten minutes to get your men out of Dodge. What? What if they refuse? Then I'm going to throw them all in jail. But... All I want is to see Ben. Talk to him. Sure. And plug him with that Derringer. You have gun, big one, in there. It's against the law, Marshal. Yeah, it sure is. Carrying him on the street. All right, you both turn over your weapons. Come on, put them on the desk. Enough of this nonsense. Now you get your vaqueros out of Dodge. I'll go right along with her and see that she does. Hal, you escort the ladies. Right. I'll be along with Vic and Chuck later. Ten minutes, senorita. Ten minutes, ha! Huh. It's 
Well, you see, Doc, the whole thing's got me, well, kind of puzzled. Do they both love me, or do neither one of them? And if just one of them loves me, how do I tell which one? You willing to marry one of them? Well, sure, I guess, if she loves me. You're going to marry Ben. Huh? You got wired into this corner, it's up to you to get him out. You mean me marrying one of them will square my old pal? Hmm. Well, if it's got to be, it's got to be. Oh, I'd do worse than marrying for Wyatt. You know that. Good. Jabba. Come here, Ben. Who's that? Oh, that Valdez, and he's got a couple... No, no, I mean the other girl. Oh, that's Jenny. I asked them to come up here. Both of them? Both of them. At the same time? Yes, Ben, at the same time. I hope you know what you're doing. La vigna proteger y me voy a quedar aquí. Rita? Jenny? Come on up to Doc Holliday's rooms. I want to talk to you. I go. Stop fight. They're, 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 they're both coming at the same time. I, I don't know, Doc. This seems like an awful lot to be doing, even for a pal like Wyatt. You're going to do a lot more. Lift him. Oh, you got to be joking. Guess maybe you ain't. Sit down in that chair. It's a big idea. Sit down. Are you crazy? Ben, all your life you've been making fools out of women. Now two of those women are going to make a dead man out of you. Right, Hal, take him. Lift him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Chuck him back around the side. There's trouble downstairs. Outside. You stay here with me. Ben? All right, ladies. I understand you came here to shoot Ben Thompson. We wouldn't be doing you a favor, would we? Not at all. But you deserve to be killed by an angry woman, don't you, Ben? I guess I do. Of course, I respect your desire to kill Ben a great deal more if you'd left Marshal Earp out of your problem. Rita? Doc. Jenny? I'll give a count of three. Read a baby. Jenny. I ain't gonna beg either of you. Ladies, I'll commence the count. One. Two. Darling. I not shoot you. I never shoot you. That's all right, dear. Now, just don't get yourself all upset. Everything's going to be all right. We... Doc, what's going on here? Happiness, wife. Happiness and joy. A wedding has just been arranged. A what? A wedding. Old pal, no hard feelings? No hard feelings, Ben. That what is mean, man. <laughs> Betty! Shh, Angel. Have a good time. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. Long may his story be
had captured three of the four dry gulchers wanted for the slaying of Mr. Brother, his good Indian friend. The fourth and final man, Roof Prentice, eluded pursuit and fled to the protection of Crump Elliott, a notorious horse and cattle thief. Wyatt, with Sheriff Bat Masterson, faced a dangerous problem. Old man Elliott's daughter, Blanche, was in love with Prentice. For the first time in the long chase after the dry gulch gang, a woman threatened to make matters complicated and deadly. <laughs> Mr. Prentice, we know him, Andy. Who shot you, Ruth? Oh, talk later. Let him a hand. Yeah. I'll call Papa and the boys. Papa isn't going to like this, you coming here. He's got enough trouble on his hands. You going to run me off, honey? Uh, I've tried that several times, but you always come back. Bleeding from a gunfighter with John Laws after you. No good bushwhacker. I should hate you. That's right. You should. Just how do you feel about me, Blanche? You and Papa don't deserve feelings. But I guess I don't want to see either of you hanged. <laughs> That's something. Yes, isn't it? My life is rich with loving and being loved. Shut up. Let me handle Papa. And he didn't have to tell me. The three bells from the porch and blood on the ground. You're a fool if you think you can hide here again. We don't want you. Now, Mr. Elliot. Shut up. He has a bone smashed in his leg and the law's after him. Where is he going to run to? Not here. I told him the last time. All right, you told him. I'll drive you to the nearest doctor. And have a posse following you? Oh, no. Push off by yourself, Gulcher. You can ride and you know the trails. All right. If you say so. I'm going with him. I said no. You don't say that to me. We'll go out and hitch up a rig. The boys won't shoot at me. Pulling a gun on your own father. Choosing between me and a low-down, dry gulch and hoodlum. Well, I reckon this is the end of it all. Yes, dear, noble Papa. Blanche, you're tearing my heart out. I'll bury it with Mama's and mine. Go on, Ruth. No, you win, he can stay. But not in my ranch house. Please, baby, we can't stand no ringing out from the law just now. Cattlemen's Association's been complaining about rustling around here. What an injustice. That's enough. Ruth will stay in the bunkhouse. Sure, baby. That's fine. That's just fine. Uh, look at that blood. Prentice got winged. He's bleeding pretty bad. Reckon he made it to Crump Elliott's? That hoodlum could make it all the way to Elliott's ranch with a pint of blood. Come on, let's find ourselves a cave. Cave? Are we gonna ride in there and take Prentice? Mr. Masterson, I've almost got you killed a couple of times. From here on in, we play it safe. Oh, sure. Well, as safe as we can. I want to take Prentice alive. That means we got to thin out all the par 60 riders. Try to get enough evidence to arrest Elliot for horse thieving. I thought we came after Prentice. He'll keep a couple of hours. Anyway, you're forgetting Miss Blanche Elliot. Captain Langley told us she was sweet on Prentice, remember? She might be able to help. Looks like a good camp over there. Come on, we'll get to work. What's 
What's all the rush about getting to the doctor? You know I can't take bone splinters out. They'll start a mortification by tonight. Before then, we'll be fighting off Parsi from Dodge. You have only two trails to watch. If you take my advice, you'll let loose those horses in the corral. Then you won't have any evidence on hand. Parsi won't be after me. Suit yourself. I'll be back before sundown. <laughs> Tie him up. Put him on his horse. Two more riders in the gully. Lift. Tie and gag him. Put him back with that other man. Hold it. Don't try that. Give me that. Who are you? My name's Zerp, Miss Elliot. I'm a marshal of Dodge City and a deputy United States marshal. Any other questions? No. Then it's my turn. I'm looking for a Mr. Roof Prentice. Charge of murder. I don't know him and I haven't seen him. No? Well, Captain Langley of the Texas Rangers tells me that you're engaged to Roof. We followed a blood trail to your ranch boundary. Well, I haven't seen him. Why don't you ride on into the ranch and ask my father? I have an errand in town. You need a doctor? For what? I'm healthy. Yeah, I can see that. But I want you to keep Prentice alive. Here. You might need that. Mighty lonesome country. Thoughtful of you, Marshal. Ain't anybody watching the east boundary, Mr. Elliott? Well, sure. Spencer and Draves and Morgan are out there. Well, I couldn't find them. What? That lazy scum. They're probably laying in the shade somewhere. Go fetch Andy. We'll ride out the horse corral. Yes, sir. All right, get off. Let's go. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, no. You leave the gags on, tie off their legs. I'll hide the horses. Wait a minute. I think this one will talk. Oh, no? come here. All right, now what do you want to say? Well, Mr. Elliott told me this was a cattle outfit, but I found out different. He's stealing horses. How do you know he steals horses? Well, I know where the corral is that he keeps them in. He runs off young colts before they're branded and then puts his own bar 60 brand on them. Where's the corral? What happens to me, Marshal? You point out the corral and you can take off. That's fair enough. You go tie him up, then we'll ride. Right. Come here. Where's the guard on this pen? Here I am, boss. Oh, Dunphy, you seen anything of Spencer or Draves or Morgan? No, sir. They're right in line, ain't they? Well, Pete couldn't find them. Something queer going on here. I think we better cut out the branded stock and turn them loose. We're the hundred and a quarter apiece. Blanche said turn them all loose. I don't go for that, but she's usually right. We'll cut out the branded stock. <laughs> There's the horses I was telling you about, Marshal. And
And there's Mr. Elliot and three of the boys. All right, you get out of here real fast. I sure will. Cutting down some of the horses. Yeah. Let's get down there. Get down there. Get down there. Hey! Drop him, Dunphy! Pete, Andy, get him! Go ahead and reach. Don't reach, Elliot. I ain't soft hearted like Marshal Earp. You're a horse thief, Mr. Elliot. You got no proof these horses ain't mine. Don't waste my time acting stupid. Now, where you hiding, Prentice? You find him. Don't worry. Now, you get down off that fence. Keep your hand away from that gun. We'll take him over the cage. Start walking. Where your horses? Over there. Go get him. Oh. oh, what are you doing? Well, ma'am, I'm glad the doctor was in. What's the trouble, Marshal? Miss Blanche wants you to look after a man that's wanted for murder. Well, now, that's all right with me, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask the lady to come with me for a few minutes. Her father wants to see her. You're lying. You did considerable truth-stretching yourself. Now, you go along with the Marshal or I go back. No. I'll do what he says. Doc, you go on into the ranch. She'll meet you there later. We arrested your father for stealing horses. You know what that means in this part of the country? Get to the point. Well, I thought that maybe you might like to trade Mr. Prentice for your dad. I won't make a choice like that. Yes, you will. Mr. Masterson and I will give you half an hour to make up your mind. And what if you don't hear from me? Well, in that case, I'll have to go into the bar 60 and take Mr. Prentice, and your father will have to stand trial. You think it over, Miss Elliott. Marshall's holding Papa for horse stealing, and he's got some of the boys, too. Herp wants to make a deal? Yes. You in exchange for Papa. What did you say? What could I say? Nothing. But I've got to send him an answer right away. If I don't, he's going to come in here after you. Let him come. I can give you a 15-minute head start. No, it's no use, honey. Why? I've been running from Herp too long. He's probably got my three pals already. Anyway, I'm tired of it. And I'm not going to spend the rest of my life running from him. Let him come and get me, if he can. Well, it'll be just the two of us. The rest of the gang has disappeared. Well, that's all right, too. Blanche, you can set him up for me. I can hide in that upstairs bedroom. You lead him out that front door. It's too quiet. Either Prentice has run or it's a trap. Well, Prentice didn't run. If he had, she'd have sent word to try and stall us so he could get away. How many guns could she call on, you reckon? About two, I'd guess. Hers and Prentice's. Your papa had more men than we took. Yeah, no. I think they let out. Well, we'll soon know. No, I'll know. You're covering me. From where? As close as you can get. The reason I'm going in first, Mr. Masterson, is because you're too young to be trusted with, Miss Blanche. Well, you watch out for yourself. That gal's a killer. Yeah, I can't believe she is, really. If I'm wrong, well, it's for Mr. Brother and Mr. Cousin. Come on, let's get at it.
Waste of time. He's been gone almost an hour. He has, huh? What you scared of? You. Let me have the pistol. I haven't one. Oh? Is that your word of honor? Yes. Miss Elliott, I hear you carry a 41 caliber Derringer in the pocket of your skirt. Now that's absurd. If you don't give it to me, I'm gonna have to take it. If you touch me, I'll... <laughs> I also have a 45 Colt. Where is it? Look for it. That's the one I intend to shoot you with. Oh. Well, I haven't got time to look for it. If you shoot me, you shoot me. Now, let's go look for Mr. Prentice. I'll walk first and you follow me. Prentice would shoot you just to get at me. Suit yourself. Stay there. Prentice, come on out of there. Why don't you go on in after him? He left, I told you. Word of honor again? I don't suppose you'd listen to a deal. I'm listening. Ruth Prentice is nothing to me anymore. I just don't want him killed. Does that seem so strange to you? No. I guess all I want now is no killing. To get away from here. First you hide out a gun to shoot me. Now you want us to be real friendly, hmm? Is the gun in here? No, but we'll find it. Where's Prentice? Keep looking, Marshal. I will. Smell of carbolic. And the doctor's work, so Ruth hasn't been in here. Bright of you. Don't move. I told you we'd find the gun. All right, go ahead. No. I don't like killing. Ruth will take care of that. This time, you go first. Back to the house. No. You do the shooting. All right. Why shouldn't I? Ruth's got enough blood on his hand. Ruth, I've got him! He's in the vine, Ruth! Brothers! Oh! Oh, Ruth, I can't. 
try. Wyatt, she could have killed you. No. The lady doesn't believe in killing. Well, she made her choice. She saved one of them. I'll turn her father loose. Now we gotta tow Prentice all the way back to Dodge. I could have saved us the trouble, but you wanted him alive. That's right. Alive. I wanted all the dry gulches alive. I'm real sorry, Miss Blanche. If you do want to leave this place, we'll help you find a job somewhere. No, thank you. I'd hate it any place. <laughs> Mr. A promise, let us watch men hang. It's my fault, young wolf. He was not there himself. I could see he did not want us there either. Would look like vengeance. What is wrong with vengeance? Marshal Herb says the law punished them for the murder of Mr. Brother. That's enough. Come, he is waiting. And no more argue about vengeance. Marshal Herb is deacon in white men's church. What is deacon? Uh, some sort of honest and respected Christian. Mm. country, the old wild west country, he made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Are the boys coming, Cy? Si? Three more. You wanted them to ride in unnoticed, didn't you? Just the six of us. Well, here comes Willie Black. We'd better get inside, Maxwell. Is the back room clear? Yeah, I fixed that. Linders, Mikhail, in here. Lock the door. Mikhail, you keep a look out at the windows. You'll be able to hear what's being said. All right, Maxwell. You explain the setup. You know the railroad. The money shipment arrives in Dodge this afternoon on number nine. Brad, you and Willie will snitch it off the truck. Chances are that Dolan, the station agent will be so busy checking the express bound for end of track that he won't even notice you. 
Red and Willie will bring the money package to my room at the Dodge Hotel. Then it's up to Maxwell and me to fix the frame and wire it up. But Tim's a special agent for the railroad. How do we know he won't be framing us? He's got a prison record back east. It ain't likely he'll be doing any talking. That's why I cut Linders and McKeel in on this. The three of them are doing it for money. The rest of us want to get wired up. I've been working on this plan ever since Earp threatened to stop my outfit from driving cattle into Dodge. Nobody talks. Understand? Right. right. Of course yeah. not. Good. This time we'll nail Earp's hide to the jail door. Quiet. No, Julie Dolan's in trouble. He's in there. Mr. Dolan? What kind of trouble is he in? There's a $10,000 express shipment to the state national missing. Special agent for the railroad brought him in. Huh? Marshal Earp? I'm Tim Maxwell, special agent for the railroad. I'm afraid you'll have to hold Mr. Dolan here on suspicion of robbery. But I never took nothing, Mr. Earp. Where's the money? He's got to prove that I took it or hid it or something, don't he? He sure does, Mr. Dolan. Now, you just rest yourself there and we'll get this all straightened out. Now, you want to bring some water? Now, somebody must have sneaked that money package while my back was turned. And that's the good Lord's truth, Mr. Earp. Did you know there was a money package on the truck? He had to know, Marshal. Here's the telegram of manifest for the currency shipment. Oh, I get telegram, bills of lading, and freight manifest, a stack of them every day. Did you see this one? Well, I guess I did, but it must have slipped my mind. All right, Mr. Dolan. There are a lot of men in uh, town that would stand bail for Mr. Dolan. Any objection? He's entitled to bail. Al, you take Mr. Dolan out to the... Shady bench in the backyard. I'll get word to Mr. Jensen over at the bank and Judge Tobin. Thank you, Mr. Earp. You'll see that I get justice, I know that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Maxwell, for being so quiet and decent about the arrest. You only done your duty. That's right, Mr. Dolan. Yes. Now, you just take it easy. A perfect job, man. Wells Fargo has the serial numbers. When do we get paid? You get paid, but not out of this. Two hundred apiece now. And three hundred when Earth's been convicted. Don't hang around, Dodge. Just when do we plant the money on Earth? We'll have to wait a couple of days. Let the papers report the robbery. Get people talking about Dolan. Build it up big. Si, I still don't trust Maxwell. An ex-con and all. It's... He knows how to dummy up. It's you and Willie who might go blabbermouth on us. My advice. Don't. Doc, I thought your missus was sick in KC. Yeah, how is she? She's better. Those two Texas guns have just rode out. I should remember the names. I never saw them. You, Willie? No. I'm glad to hear about Miss Kate. Doc, we've got to hurry. Yes. Yeah. Well. Howdy, Doc. You know, they'll never catch this fella in a thousand years. What are you up to? Then I gotta get a bail bond for him over to Mr. Jensen before the bank closes. Save you straight. What? I put up the bond for Dolan. How much? Five hundred dollars. You a friend of Mr. Dolan's? Anyone who steals money from the railroad is a friend of mine, Wyatt. I always thought of Dooley Dolan as a shipless, careless failure. 
And but if he got away with ten thousand dollars, I now regard him with fond admiration. Well, I, uh, I don't think Mr. Dolan took it. Well, if he's not guilty, I've lost interest. Now let it ride. Why? Did you ever hear a Red Smith or a Willie Black? Why? Well, Red and Willie just left town. Before they left rather hastily and guiltily, a couple of Texas gunslingers whom I should remember rode their horses down Front Street. Uh -huh. Now, any one of the four is a cinch bet to be a thief. Now, also recall that Red and Willie don't particularly like you. Now I've got it. Didn't you banish the lazy... <laughs> Didn't you banish the lazy W outfit from Dodge? No, I just threatened to. But I don't recall any Smith or Black connected with the lazy W. <coughs> uh, I guess I haven't had enough whiskey to clear my head. <coughs> I'm groping for something in a gloomy, dismal chaos of a sober mind. Doc. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. 20 seconds to reach the brain. Meanwhile, what is it? Uh, those two fellows you were asking about, Smith and Black, they've been hanging around the Forks Roadhouse. Chuck Beeson says they work for the Lazy W. Well, thank you, deputy. There's your lead, Deacon. You put Red and Willie in jail. Give them pistol weapons at six-hour intervals, and I'll guarantee they talk. The whiskey's reached your brain. Wyatt, I'm trying to help you. Thanks. But I can't arrest men just because they don't like me, and I can't beat confessions out of prisoners. You allow moral scruples to interfere with your duties as a peace officer. Good day, sir. <laughs> Taking my advice, huh? I told him to put the plant on her. You heard me. I said, you wait and something will go wrong. Let's ride back to Dodge. Back to Dodge. You crazy or something? No. I just made a citizen's arrest. Two material witnesses. Witnesses for what? Framing a peace officer. Who'd they frame? You. You men now deny that you told Doc Holliday that. An attempt would be made to frame me, huh? I never said nothing. Neither did I. You wish you hadn't said that, Willie. What about our rights, Marshal? It's his word against ours. I believe the doctor. Then lock him up. I don't admit nothing. He shot me when I was unarmed. Wyatt, I have other matters to attend to. Either lock them up or give them back their guns and turn them loose. Next time, I won't just wing you. Don't say nothing, Red. We'll stay in jail. He'll kill both of us. 
Yeah, I think you would. I'll lock him up for 24 hours. Now, what's your next move? You won't approve of it. Look, I'm involved in this now. What other information do they give you? The names of two men. I'm going to make those men talk or I'm going to kill them. You want to join the party? I can't operate that way, Doc. I thought not. I'll see you later. Doc Holliday took Willie in red. Earp has him in jail. What's Holliday doing in this? They tell me he and Earp are pals. I figured Doc to be in Kansas City. Think the boys will talk? We better not risk it. Spring the plant tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. I'll get you the money. Pour yourself a drink. Thanks. <laughs> I'm not interested in your childish speculation. Move. Who's behind the frame up? All right. Principal of mine never to shoot an unarmed man. Talk or fight? I'm waiting. Holster your gun. I need an even break. Now you tell me who's framing Wyatt, or you make your fight. Don't shoot me again. Two witnesses that admit the frame is on, Mr. Maxwell. But they won't name anyone else. They keep repeating that they don't know how or where the money's going to be planted on me. Nobody believe you had anything to do with the robbery? I don't know. A lot of people in this town that believe anything against me. I can't count on Smith or Black. Now, they'd change their stories if the plant is made on me. You're getting me suspicious. I haven't heard from Doc Holliday. He turned in those two hoodlums. That's unusual, isn't it? Well, he played a hunch. But I can't trust Doc to keep his temper. If I knew where he was or what he was up to. Forget it, Marshal. I still say that Dolan is our man. Quiet. Red Smith says he's ready to talk some more. Good. I, uh, I'd appreciate it if he wouldn't bother the Dolans anymore. If you ask it. Oh, uh, get anything, I'll be at the depot. 
Thanks. Is this one of your practical jokes, Doc? My grizzly sense of humor. I don't relish having a gun in my ribs. You better drive while you're still able. Jack! Well, we got two more names, boss. Linders and McKeel. Yeah, it may help. You, uh, get Louie and ring out the town, huh? Marshal, your friend Doc Holliday has really stepped overboard, I'm afraid. Oh. He just kidnapped some fellow at the point of a gun. Where? The Dodge House. They headed south out of town to Spring Wagon. A Smith named two other men. We better search the town for him. Give him a hand, will you, Mr. Maxwell? Why, well, sure. Well, they worked it. Find it on my horse. What a dirty scum. You know the serial numbers? I've memorized them. This is the stuff. Now you hang on to it. I'm going after Doc. Marshal, I wouldn't leave now. What? You don't think that Wyatt know anything? Oh, of course not. But I am a special agent for the railroad. <laughs> I have to go through the motions of making an investigation. Oh, that's stupid. You go after Doc, Wyatt. I'll take care of Mr. Maxwell. No, he's right. You, uh, tell Mayor Kelly and Judge Tobin. We'll have this out in an open meeting. Then I'll go after Dr. Holliday. That satisfy him? I'm satisfied already, Marshal. But I can't falsify a report to the railroad. <laughs> and I sure don't want to tell them that part of the stolen money was found in your saddlebag. No, that's fine of you. Go on, Hal. Whoa. You want to pick your own tree? Tree? It doesn't have to be a large tree. I want you tied up. You might as well be comfortable. You must be crazy. I told you I didn't know any of the hoodlums you named. I certainly wouldn't want to frame Marshall up, but I never even met the man. Liar! Whoa! Get out. Why don't you just shoot me in the back and, and get it over with? It'd be too easy. Besides, I want to hear the truth come gasping out of you. Johnson, this is a hypodermic syringe. In my dental practice, I used it for surgery. But now, now it contains my own special formula. McKeel tells me that you're the boss behind the frame up of Wyatt Earth. What about that? You know, the Apaches have a trick noose, lets them hang a man all day. <laughs> now hold still. This has to go slow. <clears throat> slow and easy. A little bit at a time. A little more. Are you the boss man? No. All right, we'll try some more of this. Right now, you should be feeling a slight chill. There. Yeah, that's the borderline. If I give you any more, you'll lose consciousness. 
No, Doc, please. No, don't please. worry, Johnson. I can revive you if you have a strong heart. Any history of heart trouble? Of course, if I did revive you, it'd hardly be worth the effort. You'd be a babbling idiot for the rest of your life. Well, here you go. No! No! I can't take out. I'll talk. I'll talk. And I don't believe for a moment that Marshal Earp had any knowledge of the robbery or of the money found in his saddlebag. Well, certainly not. It's a dirty frame up. Then you do understand my position. I can't report to the railroad that some anonymous thief has returned $3,500 of the express shipment. Well, what have you got to say about all this, Wyatt? Al's talking to Smith and Black. I suggest they be given a chance to repeat their verbal confessions. All right, bring them in. This is some fool nonsense. Any one of 50 people could have planted the loot on Wyatt. Why, you could have done it yourself. Now, now, Jim. Well, we'll see what these hoodlums have to say. Well, maybe they know Maxwell. Whoa, now, Mary Kelly. It's your own marshal who's under suspicion here. Hell, you take him on out there. I'll be out in a few minutes. Right. Smith, back. Yeah. Didn't you tell Marshal Earp in the presence of his chief deputy that an attempt would be made to frame him? No, I didn't. Me neither. They're lying. You're lying? Do you know this man? Never laid eyes on him. The same for me. All right. I've tried to be fair and decent. And all I got for it is to be accused of crooked work by Mayor Kelly. I'm going to write an honest report to the railroad. And what you do about Marshal Earp is none of my business. Lift him, Maxwell. Get out of my way. Now you lift your hands or you go for your gun. Sorry, Johnson's boss of the outfit, White. He's outside in a wagon. I, uh, I let him rest. I'm grateful, Doc, but it just wasn't necessary. Mary Kelly and Judge Tobin would have stayed loyal no matter what that phony special agent did. Perhaps. You have your methods, I have mine. I'll ask you to do me one little favor. Hmm? Name it first. Red Smith and Willie Black. Turn them loose. So you can shoot them down in cold blood? Uh-uh. Well, they'll keep. You know why? I'd have made a very crooked but efficient peace officer. And what a noble, honest gambler you'd have been. Well, maybe the good Lord has other plans, huh? Amen, Deacon. Amen. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told.
The friendship between Marshal Wyatt Earp and Dr. John H. Holliday was one of the mysteries of Dodge City. Why Marshal Earp, a deacon in the church, could tolerate Doc Holliday was mighty puzzling to Wyatt's friends. Doc Holliday, gambler, gunfighter, killer, had a mean disposition and a caustic tongue. That two men so different in character could even associate on friendly terms would seem preposterous. And Wyatt's insistence on making a friend of Doc Holliday finally came to a crisis between Wyatt and the men who hired him to civilize Dodge City. Guys, gentlemen. Give me three. Doc, we better call it no deal. We gotta shove along and get us some fellas that crossed us. All right, Snakey. You know your own business. Well, what else can you do with fellas that turn you into the Texas Rangers? Spare me the tale of woe. Just kill them and get it over with. Now, that's what I wanted to hear you say, Doc. Fellas, when it's all over, remember, Doc Holliday was the judge and jury. He said, kill him. We're just carrying out the judgment of the court. Snakey, you amuse me. Whenever I gamble with you, I always collect a rare bit of humor. Well, thank you, Doc. Irony appeals to me. Appointing me, Judge and Joy, that, that shows real imagination. And if you do have style, Snakey. Now, in acknowledgement of my praise, I trust to give me a good start back to Dodge. Why, sure. Fifteen minutes be enough? Ample, my friend. Ample. Devil's Garden. Ain't that too close to Earp and Dodge? Devil's Garden. I like the name. Come on, boys. Let's get the horse. And I don't care how many favors he's done you. Holiday will be the ruin of your career as a peace officer. The man is cold, ruthless, cruel. Now, the whole town thinks we should have tried him for that Maxwell killing. Look, Doc broke the case. He pulled me off a tough spot. Well, I don't care. Now, something's got to be done. The judge and I have come here to try... Now, Wyatt, will you listen to me? Wyatt. Wyatt, there are five dead men on the trail less than a mile from the city limits. Oh? Any idea who did it? The cowhand told me they used to ride with Snakey Gratton. Snakey Gratton? Right. Now, let's get out there. Now, Wyatt, what about Doc? Not now, Mr. Mayor. Oh, Wyatt, thank heaven. What's the matter, Mr. It's Kent? about the doctor. He went out to play cards with Snakey Gratton. Oh? He promised to be back an hour ago. I'm afraid he's had a relapse. Well, now, don't you worry about the doc, Miss Kate. We'll find him. The doc can take care of himself. Come on, Hal. Hold on, Miss Holliday. Oh, <clears throat> Mr. Kelly. Judge Tobin. I was so upset, I uh, didn't... Mrs. Holliday, sit down a moment, please. We have something important to discuss. Oh, well, of course. Is it about Dr. Holliday? Something Wyatt didn't... Miss Holliday. Five members of the Snakey Gratton gang were just ambushed and killed. Your husband was playing cards with Snakey Gratton. Why, yes. But you don't think... John doesn't ambush people. Well, while you were in Kansas City, he did some unnecessary killing. To keep Wyatt from being framed. He didn't help Wyatt, Mrs. Holliday. He hurt him. Oh, I see. You want John to stop being friends with Wyatt? Well, at least he could stop being such pals with a hoodlum like Snakey Gratton. You don't understand that. Why John likes Mr. Gratton. No, we don't. How would you like being locked up in a Texas jail for shooting a gambler in a square fight? The gambler was crooked, but he had all the influence on his side. I had no one to turn to except Mr. Gratton. Howdy, Miss Kate. John's in jail, in Bracus. They aim to hang him for shooting one eye Gillum. Well, I'll be. Doc ought to get a medal for that. The rope is what he'll get. Unless you can do something, Mr. Grafton. Do something? <laughs> Why, that Bracus jail ain't nothing but a board shack. Hey, Muggins. 
This is Miss Holiday, Doc's wife. Howdy. She'd like for us to get old Doc out of that jail at Breakers. We'll need some of the boys. I'll round them up, boss. They like breaking jails, Miss Kate. You've done them a real favor just to mention it. Now you light down rest a while. We'll have them right out for you. Mr. Grattan pretended it was nothing. But he and his men risked getting in trouble with the rangers. Hey, we will hang one. that thing is early, I'll have to run you in. Ooh. All, All right, right, get in there. Inside. Here we are. Bring them out. John owed Mr. Grattan, you see? I'm a circuit judge, Mrs. Holliday. I can't enthuse over Mr. Grattan's outlaw generosity. And right now, Doc's probably riding with Grattan to some hoodlum hideout. My husband joining with the outlaws? Well, Wyatt and Hal, loaded with spit and ginger. Where did it happen, Doc? Back yonder a few miles, I heard shooting. Look, I've been up all night. I ran out of whiskey and I'm feeling mean, so ride along, will you? I'm sorry, Doc. But Miss Kate told me you were with Snakey Grattan. Kate tells you too much. It's more trouble for Wyatt. He's already in bed with Tobin and Kelly. He's off, Hal. Did you just have to be playing cards with Snakey Grattan? Why not? I, I like Snakey. But you took no part in the killing, huh? No. I... <coughs> Give him some whiskey. Is that an order? Yes, it is. Your chief deputy doesn't like me. And it's quite mutual. If he wasn't your chief deputy, he'd be dead. <sighs> Temptation to shoot him has often assailed me. Al has a job to do, and so have I. I concede that. <laughs> Thank you. I feel better. I'm going to ask you once more. Were you at the shooting? No, sir, I was not. Did you know that Snakey Grattan was going to ambush those men? Certainly. That makes you an accessory before the crime. Aren't you going to arrest him? You try, deputy. All right, quit your jabbering, both of you. Now, Hal, right back into town. Get a handful of deputies. We'll meet you out there. Yes, sir. You know, I'm trying hard to stay your friend, but you don't make the job easy. Oh, now, cool off, Wyatt. I'll let you arrest me. What good's that going to do? I'm still a United States Deputy Marshal, and I gotta try and find Snakey Grattan. Now, do you know where he's likely to be, or does your perverted sense of loyalty to outlaws require you to say nothing? You know, if you take a drink occasionally, you'd be a lot easier to deal with. Come on. It is contrary to common sense, Miss Holliday, for a man to consort with outlaws and claim friendship with a peace officer. Dr. Holliday compromises Wyatt. Law-abiding citizens can't understand such a friendship. People don't understand my husband. John saved Wyatt's life on at least two occasions. And another time, John had a run-in with two of Sheriff Masterson's men. They were new deputies, and they'd been drinking. All right, comes. Hawk! Ain't you the famous Doc Holliday? I'm Dr. Holliday, yes. Fast gun. Mean with a knife. Everybody's scared of you, huh? You better go back in that saloon and drink it off. We ain't scared of you. Just start for your gun. I'm not wearing a gun. Go get one. We'll wait right here. And we'll be right here.
John, what is it? Two of Masterson's deputies got fresh with me. They asked for a gunfight and they go to get one. No, no. Masterson and Wyatt are close friends. Bat should keep his deputy sober. We don't care about him. It's Wyatt. You'll make trouble for Wyatt. Keith, they're drunk, but they have no right to insult me. I don't take that. John, Wyatt's the only real friend we have in this town. I'm not fighting his deputies. But you'll get Wyatt in trouble. You'll just be proving what everybody says, that he's foolish to be friends with us. They'll... they'll laugh at him, John. Yeah. Uh... Why don't you finish your letter? Yes, yes, John. You don't know how tough that was for John to keep out of a fight. But he swallowed his pride for Wyatt's sake. But he rides with Snakey Granton and he helps massacre five men. No better than that, Mr. Kelly. John never shot anyone from ambush. He doesn't have to. He's as good with a gun as Wyatt. If John's mixed up with Granton, it's social. Not business. They never even had a chance. Gratton got him from those rocks not more than 30 feet off the trail. Well, they never gave Snakey a chance. They stole his robbery hall and then informed on him to the Rangers. And how much would Snakey and his boys have gotten for that in Texas? Someday I must give you a lecture on criminal ethics. Criminal ethics? Precisely, Deacon. You have your code, Snakey has his. In Snakey's code, what those men did merited a death sentence. And you agree with that, huh? No. But I understand it. Oh. And you think it's quite all right? You're trying to ask me where I think Snakey and his boys went. Well, why don't you ask me? Point blank. All right. Where? I can't tell you. Criminal ethics, huh? No. I don't want you riding into an ambush. Katie would leave me. She should have left you a dozen times. Tell you anything? Oh, not yet. I'm gonna give him one last chance. You go see if you can find any sign. Yeah. Well, they can't have gone too far. We'll have to trail them. They'll bushwhack you. Well, I've been bushwhacked before. Not by Snakey. He's a genius at it. All right, you warned me. Goodbye, Doc. Too bad. I hate to think of an old crock like me outliving you. You just save your tears for the funeral. Did they scatter? No, they're headed south toward Bushwaker country. Good. All right, you deputies, spread out the flank, Hal, and me. You keep a wide interval, but keep in touch. <laughs> Take the horses down there about a quarter of a mile, pick them by a stream if you can find one. That's far, Snakey? Yeah. Herb's going to be coming along here. I don't want no horse. We need to warn him. What about Holiday? Ain't him and Herb good friends? Doc Holiday's a good friend of mine, too. But he don't know where we're at. Now get these horses moving. 
Wyatt's the only man John knows for a friend who goes to church and prays. John is ill. He can't live many more years. I think John holds to his friendship with Wyatt because he's just too stubborn and cantankerous to ask the good Lord for pardon. Wyatt's out there riding into an ambush. What Doc Holliday does about it will be a sort of a test case, won't it? I don't know. I can't honestly say what John will do. Well, what would you say if he threw in with the Grattan gang? Then he should leave Dodge and never see Wyatt again. We agree. We'll stand on that, Mrs. Holliday. Why are you stopping him? I figure Snakey Grattan's holed up here someplace. Probably in Devil's Garden. So? Well, there's no need of taking six men into an ambush. I figure we ought to stay here, send back to Dodge for at least 20 more good guns. And not that many in Dodge. I don't want a lot of family men in a gunfight with Grattan. We're riding on. Maybe Earp ain't coming. He's coming, all right. We killed five men not one mile from Dodge. He's a United States Marshal. You just stay down, hold your rifle on that trail. Call in the deputies. Now they branched off here. Everything indicates that Snakey's holed up in the Devil's Garden. I know that neck of the woods. If Snakey's as good a bushwhacker as Doc says he is, he'll be laying for us in that clump of brush and rocks over there, about a mile. Now, there's a trail that winds around in the back, in the rear of Devil's Garden, about five miles. And we'll take that trail. We're with you. No, I'm going myself. Al, I want you to move within long rifle range and lob some bullets into that brush. You take the deputies. Well, won't that uh, scare Snakey off? I don't think so. You just keep him pinned down. It'll take me uh, about an hour to get around to the rear of him. What then? When you hear me call, you come running. You heard the marshal. Get moving. Come on. They're coming. Get in here real close. We can get him now. I said, hold your fire. Snakey! Don't nobody shoot us, Doc. Keep your sights on Earp and them deputies. Doc, what are you doing here? 
You got any liquor? I ran out. I closed the bar, Doc. It's 4th of July. <coughs> well. Thank you, Snakey. <laughs> you better sit down. Them's real bullets. So they are. They're close enough. Yeah. All right, mom now. Down, down. Let him come and get us. Why, it better hurry. All right, load up, we'll charge him. That Earp is awful smart. He's smarter than you. Huh? If you were a smart man, Snakey, you'd head for Texas and turn yourself over to the Rangers. And get hanged? They can't pin that ambush on you. The worst you'll get's two years. Who's that talking, you or Earp? Don't be an idiot. You start killing peace officers and you will get the rope. Have you gone over to Earp? I'm sorry you said that, Snakey. That statement calls for a draw. Don't try it, Doc. He makes a move for his gun, break his arm. All right, the rest of you. Let's rush him. No! Hold it, Doc. Tell the rest of your men to drop their guns. Grab them! Use your head, Snakey. All right, we're whopped. Drop them. Let's go. Help! Come on! Doc, you better put a tourniquet on that arm. Let's get down to hell. Come on. Al, stay here and take care of these men. What happened? Oh, John. Wyatt, won't you tell me what happened? Well, I'm sorry, Miss Kate. I, I told Doc I wouldn't say anything about it. Oh, John, please. No. Did John do something wrong? Is he under arrest? You've got to tell me what he did. Mayor Kelly and Judge Tobin don't think you should be friends with John anymore. Well, well Miss Kate, Doc and I are still friends. We're still friends. Oh. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told.